From the world of AV programming and control with James King, I'm Steve Greenblatt, and this is Ask the Programmer. James, it's great to be back with you, and we have a great topic that I think a lot of people will either uh, connect with or be curious about, so uh, looking forward to digging in. Oh, it's great to be back, Steve. Um, I agree. This topic is a, a good one, and I hopefully our listeners uh, find it that way. So... You know, everybody always struggles with you know when something done. You know, whether it's a system, whether it's a project, whether it's uh, code, uh, whether it's uh, something that's a, a a passion idea that you have. Because there's always tweaks and changes, and and we 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 talk about scope creep. We talk about you know all different aspects of of um, being able to define and mark something as completed and and everybody has their own definition of it. But what I think is important for us to talk about, which I don't know if this always happens, is is there is there a way to implement quality control and be, uh, be have a little bit more certainty so that it's more objective than subjective in terms of what what makes something uh, done. And I know that there are many different ways of of doing quality control in the manufacturing world with ISO 9000. And I know that uh, there's uh, also an AV 9000 and there, there's different ways to be able to quality control a system. But what is what, what do we do when it's something like programming? Because that's not as easy for everybody to define and th there's not always a right or wrong. So James, I'll... Uh, I, with that, I'll give you the hard question of saying, um, is there is this something that is doable? And and if so, what 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 are some ways that we could make progress in this area? Is it doable? I think everything is doable, um, but it's like you said, it's a hard one because you can't really define the code to per se but you can define the experience or as some people like to call the user story and that would explain your quality control because if your user story is signed off on and your code is following that user story then you can say we met our scope but then it goes into the whole notion is is the story really what the user expect it to be? And I think that that's the key element there that that keeps coming up, because who who's defined that story? Is that just something that's collaborative, and is that something that was discussed and and agreed upon, or is it something that was in somebody's head and they determined that this was the right solution? Um, I think that that that's very important there. Uh, what I found and I've been doing for many years is that there needs to be some type of a roadmap for programming. They, and, and, you know, the, over the years, people have said, give me the, the, um, touch panel printouts so that I can approve them. But to me, that, that only tells one side, if not even a whole half of the, this, the way the system works. Cause if I gave you a set of touch panel printouts and, and gave five other people the same set, you can both say that things should work very differently. Or, you know, everybody would probably come up with a different user story, I, I think is what I, what I meant to say. So one way is, is documentation, uh, being able to, to say that this is what I intended to do and then say, this is what we did. Uh, that sometimes holds water and, uh, and, or, but, but there, there are probably other situations where that, that could also be contested or, or not necessarily be as effective as, uh, as we might think. I agree. And I think that's where a skill us programmers need to learn is truly listening to the client or the end user. And getting to what they're trying to do and then being able to 
put it back to them that shows that you both understand what it's going to be. Because, for example, if let's just take a simple command of powering the system on. Powering the system on might mean different things to different people. For example, the powering system on for me might mean turning on the display and enabling audio. For someone else, that might also mean turning on the computer, lowering the shades, turning the lights off. Who's right? Who's wrong? So it's really understanding what the user is expecting and being able to communicate that back. And I, I learned this skill, this thought of more of a client serving end. And what I try to do, I use this language with the, my team members who, uh, when they're working with clients and tr troubleshooting is don't lead, but follow up. And what I mean by that is don't come in, if the user goes, Oh, and I, I, I'm trying to sing a program. Oh, I want the system to power on. Oh, you want a uh, system power on system. You want to do X, Y, Z, and Z, and you name it all out in front of them. They might go, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want. But is it really what they want it? Or do you just tell them what they want it? And then they don't like that feature. So better off is explain to me what you want when you mean system on. And then when they do tell you, repeat it back to them and go, okay, what I heard is you want the display to turn on, the audio to kick on, and the shades to drop. That's what I heard. Is that correct? Okay. And now you program that feature in. Um, so like I said, don't try to lead the conversation, but follow the conversation. That, that makes a lot of sense. I, 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 I I agree with I, and I love the idea of of keep of ask a lot of questions, and and um, make sure that they that that the, what you've gotten does not get lost in the communication or it does not get misinterpreted, <laughs> and of course document it and echo it back as you mentioned too. So you're telling me you heard you know I heard this and I I love that love that idea. Um, the one and, of the challenges. And Oh, sorry to cut you off, but I think what also is a, a good notion of using language is like that is you're not telling the user they're wrong or other, you're like, did I, you're, you're being more open, be like, this is how I took it. Am I correct? Like you're putting like, did I misunderstood you instead of saying, well, user, you told me wrong. It's more like I want to make sure I understood you. It's more they're more accepting to that language over than go, well, you said you wanted this. So so how often, because I, I've had my experience with this and how how often is it better to start with an example or and and offer up a couple of options versus start with a, a blank slate and and expect that somebody's going to be able to tell you what they're looking for? Because to me, there's um, there's certainly a lot of challenges that you run into in that realm, and and it could could end up being very frustrating. Yeah, I think both realms can be very frustrating because giving them examples is great, but then again, are you leading the conversation? Or are you following the conversation? And using a blank slate could be overwhelming, not just for us as programmers, but as a user, because they may not know. Yeah. Um, and I know he's going to love me dropping his name here, but the best example I heard was actually from USC, Joe Way. And what he was talking about was they sat down with the faculty members and they're like, take me through your steps of the classrooms. Like, what do you do? And the majority of them always came in and go, I come in and I start my class. And then they go through how they do everything. So their power on button says start class instead of on. They use the language. They listen to what their users are saying. To us, power on is like, you know, we have it on everything. Our phones have power on. Our 
remotes have power on. Everyone knows what power on is, but now they put the system into the language that the user uses naturally. So now it becomes more intuitive to the user. And I, I, I mean, I, I love again, great example. And that, that's uh, I, that is certainly uh, uh, a, a very valuable tip. And the, the other, the experience that I've had also is that when you are asking somebody what they want, they they'll come back and say, well, you're the expert. You should tell me. And that, yeah. and, you know, so that you end up becoming in, in that, um, the almost a, str a struggle there because they, they, they can't tell you what they want, but they can tell you what they don't want. <laughs> and, you know, and, and sometimes that the, the, to me, the answer is you need to have, you need to take judge at the time and take uh, to be able to have a process. It almost is, is, um, uh, a, it has to be done separately from the actual implementation and, and the development. It, it, it I mean, this is the scoping part of it. Um, yeah. If we wrap this back around to to where we started, we we you know wanted to know how do we test stuff, and then we were saying, well, you, you can't test unless you know what you were intending to do. Um, I think quality control is always a big big issue, and and you know as we know, programmers who test their own work um, are. Are, are thorough at doing it, but they're going to test it in a biased way. And and I think we've talked about this before that it's always good to have somebody else uh, go through and test for you either to um, run through a system in ways that you didn't think or to um, eliminate your, your the the bias that you that you may have in your test testing procedure. Um, Anything that you have done that has been helpful in that realm? Because I guess in the end, what we're trying to do is figure out what what does what what can we do to avoid us putting systems in the field and then having to update them or correct them and and you know and and have users find what they consider our bugs. So, one I think we all know that we're, we're always going to once we roll out our users going to find a bug in this system uh, we cannot predict every option or every use case our users will do uh, so there will be things we have to patch update and address after we roll but the best way is take yourself out of the situation of that you put yourself in. And what I mean by that is your mental set. You, you're sitting there, you program the room, you know how that space is supposed to operate. Great. Leave that, if time permits. Again, we all know time doesn't permit this. Go away. Go to another project. Go to another space. Take yourself out of the situation where your brain is kind of disconnect from your code and then go back and use a system is it working the way you think it is it did you miss something um just like writing code sometimes you gotta like if you get into a roadblock you gotta take that mental break from that same thing when we're qcing a room because we may come in and go all right this room qc fine because we think the code's working but it may not be working actually the way we want it we just know how it should work. So we stepped over a step or two and that we may find later. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with, with all the things that you said there. I, I, th I think the, the thing I would add to is just making sure that there, there, there's certain best practices that are always followed. And, and that that's, that's something that I think could be, can make things a little bit more objective to say, whenever we're working with um, a device that has, bi-directional feedback it always has you always use it and you know and or you're you're making sure that you're querying uh, a device to make sure that the that that not only does it have true feedback but it also could updates if if it's been changed externally from the control system so you know i mean th those are just a couple of different examples but but defining those standards, I think would also help to be able to say that we, 
we know that the, these are the, the 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 minimum requirements outside of the the subjective part of the operation. The, these are the objective components that always need to be there. Yeah, and I think really the best way of doing that is to find uh, create yourself a operation checklist and use that when you go into a space. For example, like like you're talking about with the whole feedback. So your document should say, okay, if I let's say I'm turning on a projector. If I hit the on button on the touch panel, the, the on button should change to this, projector should come on. All right, that works. Well, now I'm pulling my projector, so I know that. So what if I turn off the projector with the remote? Does my touch panel reflect this now? That should be on your document of your mm -hmm. checklist. And this way, this, you don't miss those steps because you, you have them listed out already and you go through them. Yeah, I, I, and I think that that's a lot of times overlooked uh, either because the time is not taken to do them, to do that, and or it's assumed that that's going to be included. But the, it's just an interesting conversation. And the, these are just age old topics that will have always been a a need for them to be discussed and and um and has probably caused people a lot of debate and and a lot of frustration or extra time and it's always going to be there moving forward unless we are get better at uh, being more mindful and and diligent about coming up with these types of quality processes I agree. And that's where, again, we got to get into the documentation. We got to get into noting, not just like I mentioned the whole checklist, but even documenting our code of saying, this is what this code should do. So we know instead of allowing that creep or allowing that uh, unbiased is like, well, yeah, it does this. Well, does it really do that? Is it documented that it does that? Or all that stuff. So you really, yes, we need to really hone our craft of documentation to get to that done state. And I don't think us programmers will ever get to done, done. <laughs> and that's probably a good place for us to wrap this one, because that's going to be another whole conversation. The, um, the, the thing that I would just consider and I would ask our audience is, do you have standards like we just discussed? Are there certain minimum requirements that you use for every system that you do, regardless of the the operations? And of course, this is going to change depending on what side of the industry you're on. If you're a an end user, it's going to be a lot easier because this is your organization. If you're an integrator, you you might have to have different sets of standards for different clients, or you maybe that's a criteria that you you work with to when you present yourself to a client and if you're an independent programmer, you may even be another step further. So the, these are just um, good topics for conversation. And I'd like to hear what, what uh, our audience thinks and, and who's using what and, and what are some recommendations there. Um, James, how can people get in touch with you to continue this conversation and, and to learn more about what you're up to? Oh, as always, you can find me on Twitter, AV underscore James King. Uh, especially on Sunday mornings in the AV and the AM, uh, writer for the Higher Ed Digital Magazine, the IT and AV column. Again, you Google me, you'll find me. <laughs> and I'll be there right there with you on AV and the AM on most Sundays. So you can find me at Steve Greenblatt. I'm also uh, active on LinkedIn and do a little bit of writing and various publications, AV Network and Commercial Integrator and my company, uh, website at controlconcepts.net. So I uh, lo love to uh, communicate with the industry and our audience and be able to help build, grow more conversations amongst programmers, which is what we're here for. Um, and uh, if you can want to reach us, you uh, please also share an episode. And that, that would be a, a really great thing that you can do to help others get more uh, get to create create more exposure for what we're doing, and you could uh, hear and listen to this on either YouTube or uh, Apple and Google Podcasts. So many different places to do so. And with that, this has been Ask the Programmer. <laughs>